Late Night Health continues. Our guest is Lori Finkelstein in studio as our co-host is uh, Mike uh, Anderson, Michael Anderson. And uh, do you have any questions for uh, for Lori? I, I do. Lori, in, in, in being a therapist and being around therapists and knowing the, the sector as well as you do, what would be, what would you consider too much therapy? Do, do you, when, when, you know, like too much of anything isn't good anymore, but it, do, you, do you have yeah, kind of a, I hear you. a playing yeah, field? I do. I do. If, if you are, you know, if you, if you're seeing your therapist for 30 years and you're just rehashing the same problems over, <coughs> excuse me, over and over again, that's the problem. You're not getting anywhere. And, and maybe you do need to take a break and switch things up. The purpose of therapy is to learn skills uh, to help mitigate whatever you're facing, whether it's a mental illness like anxiety, depression, OCD, um, or a situational uh, thing. You're dealing with a death or whatever. Um, there's only so long before it's it stops being useful. You know, you need to learn what you need to learn and kind of move on. And then, like I said, tune-ups are great. I said, I I don't, yeah. And to find, and also to find, you know, somebody that, as you mentioned earlier, that you can work with. Exactly. And that can be a process in itself. Um, You know, and, and, and unfortunately with health insurance, we're all limited to a degree of who we can see. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it's hard to find that person. It's, uh, sometimes you have to settle for somebody that uh, you work well with that it may not be the ideal person for, for the moment. And, and after a while, okay, you stop and uh, hopefully things will change and you have greater access to more people to try. And at the same time, what about vibes? You walk in, you start talking to a therapist. They say, hey, why are you here? You say, well, I have OCD and I'm depressed. And you just, their answer, their response, their body language just is a turnoff. Do you get up and walk out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just recently, I've been using one psychiatrist for many years, and I knew for for a long time that it just wasn't a good relationship. He wasn't really helping me. And I, but it was hard to leave because it's frightening to leave. It's, it's, it can be frightening to, to stop one doctor and start with another one. And it can be unsettling. But he started telling me things that were completely not helpful. And it was becoming aggravating. And I, I did. I, I'm like, okay, this, this, we're done. I'm, this is not helpful anymore, and uh, it's time to change. And uh, I've done it the chicken way, where I've left the office and simply not made an appointment, and I've been direct, saying this is not working, I need to move on. And what about the difference between a psychiatrist who can give drugs, mm-hmm. right, and a psychologist right. or a marriage and family counselor or a social worker? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the difference is, um, the real difference is between psychiatrists and then all the others, the social workers, therapists, psychologists, um, psychotherapists. The uh, psychiatrist manages the medication but will not spend a half hour or an hour talking about your problems. It's very brief. It's a 10-minute visit. If you're lucky, you talk about what's going on, whether the medication is working, and they tweak the medication if necessary, whereas all the others are where you can go in-depth on your problems and learn tools to mitigate them. Do you need both? Do people... I think so. I think so, yeah. If you're taking medication... Uh, maybe there's things that you can do. Maybe that's enough. But maybe there are things you can do and learn, coping mechanisms that can augment the medication and relieve more of the symptoms. Lori, good luck with the book. You have a new book coming out too, not in in the future about CBDC. I know about these things. I know you're very well versed. I do have a new book coming. It's forthcoming. It's in the publishing process. It's called A Who: A Higher Order of Thinking. It's what every senior and marijuana virgin should know before lighting up. And I have a big section on just CBD. And that's so it's a and, book. and it's for people what fifty over fifty plus. 
I gear it towards seniors, absolutely. That's my passion. But all of my information is applicable to adults at any age. Gotcha. Lori, we are out of time. We thank you for uh, joining us. Mike, thank you. Will you come back? I absolutely will. Mark, Daryl, thanks so much. Really enjoy being with you. We we really appreciate it. Daryl, as always, thank you. Thank you. I, and uh, we are out of time. Join us at LateNightHealth.com. LateNightHealth.com. We'll have Lori's picture, copy of the book up there, as well as a link to Lori's uh, website. As I say every week, have a good week. Have a great week. Most importantly, have a healthy week. See you next time. Bye-bye for now. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents, or just have fun. Find out about the advertising opportunities with Late Night Health. Call us at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at latenighthealth.com. That's info at latenighthealth.com. Join Late Night Health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care. Call now at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308.